right, here we go. Friday morning, your Friday morning Hurricane Lee update. Uh, we've been doing these all week, and honestly, I've gotten some, some nice feedback. Uh, it sounds like you guys like this style and um, the information that you get. It's kind of behind the scenes. It's a little more casual, and you can get a little more information out of, out of me, too. You can suck a little more out. Um, so uh, here is Hurricane Lee right there, or right here. Uh, the winds are 85. It, it does look a lot more ragged this morning. You can see all this dry air getting circulated in, and, and there's no defined eye any longer. Um, you know, here's kind of the northern edge of that eye wall up in here. That's probably where the most intense convection is and the strongest winds are. But it's really starting to get strung out. Its northward movement is picking up. You know, yesterday it was only moving like five miles an hour. Now that it's getting to these northern latitudes uh, higher up, closer to us, it's starting to pick up forward speed. So, you know, we're about 24 hours away from getting into the brunt of this. Uh, the official track from the Hurricane Center maintains some sort of landfall to our east. Very, very important. Probably the eastern or the western tip of Nova Scotia and then through the Bay of Fundy up into New Brunswick and missing PEI. That's Prince Edward Island right there. Um, that puts us on the better side, the less impactful side. Uh, with that said, we still will end up with our fair share of problems or potential problems. Also important to note, uh, look at this, like late tonight, early tomorrow morning, Cat 1, and then as it gets into these frigid waters here in the Gulf of Maine, it just gets zapped. I mean, like all of the energy sucked out of this thing. Um, so we do have, for the first time since 2020, um, and the tropical storm that I can't pronounce that Aaron may be able to pronounce. Aaron, would you like to? Hey, let me get my mic over closer to you. <laughs> How do you pronounce that tropical storm back in 2020? Isaias. There it is. I said it all morning. Isaias <clears throat> was the last time we had a, thank you, Aaron. Thank you for that cameo. <laughs> I may come back to you in a second too. <clears throat> the last time we had a tropical storm warning in the state of Maine was 2020 with that tropical storm that Aaron just said. So the wind in a tropical storm is anywhere from 39 miles per hour, that's the low end, which a lot of us will experience, up to 73 miles per hour, that's the high end, which few and maybe none of us will experience at all from this particular storm. So I want to make that clear. It's a, it's a wide range for tropical storm winds. And what we'll get is mostly down around 40, down around that 39. So let's start with... Um, Let's do a little timeline, actually. Why don't we do the timeline first? Because we're going to see high clouds work in throughout the day. And by the way, um, look up in the sky every once in a while when the sun gets a little higher, like closer to noon. Um, when uh, Hang on, i got to just make sure that I'm staying up to date on my text because there's some important stuff going on all around the world. Um, you may see halos up there today. Halos happen when cirrus clouds, which are high thin clouds are made up of ice crystals they're up right where the jets fly 30 40,000 feet and those ice crystals refract the light and, and sometimes you can get this this halo this circle of rainbow looking colors around the sun it's kind of cool it happens a handful of times throughout the year uh, 2 a.m. tonight tomorrow morning starting to see that initial rain band get to the coastline it'll be light rain at first uh, fast forward to let's go to 8 a.m. Heavier rain starting to circulate in and propagate westward. There's a lot of dry air over us right now. I mean, you, there's no more humidity, right? It feels a billion times better out there. And then we get to noon, and some of these bands that are rotating into eastern Maine are pretty intense. I mean, some really, really heavy rainfall. But notice on the other side of the state, the western edge is pretty defined. Like, no rain to the New Hampshire border and steady light to moderate rain you know, through the mid coast. So there will be a sharp line between no rain and some rain, but I don't expect flooding over here. We're just not gonna get that much rain. And during the afternoon, it probably becomes, you know, more scattered showers and not steady rainfall. In this area, this area of the state though, Eastern and Northern Maine, you're still getting some pretty heavy rain and then everything circulates out of here uh, Saturday night. By Sunday morning, we're clear and it's going to be, uh, it's gonna be sunny and it's gonna be a beautiful day. So rainfall amounts, you know, I'm most concerned for freshwater inland flooding in down East Maine and perhaps up in Arista County too. 
two to four inches of rain very likely in some of those heavy rain bands not out of the question we get more i mean tropical systems you know historically drop insane amounts of rain because they're filled with moisture so it's possible but look at this i mean there's nothing less than an inch and maybe less than a half an inch and maybe nothing at all in new hampshire but in this zone of two to four there will probably be culverts that get compromised and therefore road spots on them that get washed out you know pavement problems uh, maybe some sinkholes or you know there may be some detours uh, roads may have to be shut down for a little bit and especially washington county so that's the rain and the flooding um, and the impacts from that let's talk wind because i i think when this thing is kind of said and done and when we monday morning quarterback it i think a lot of us will judge this storm and the severity of it by the wind and most most critically by the number of power outages and that second one is a really tough one it's really tough to quantify it because this scenario doesn't happen often it happens rarely where we get a powerful nor'easter type storm when we have leaves on every tree and the ground is saturated and wet and the soil is kind of ready and loose and root systems you know can be also compromised Th those, all those ingredients don't line up very often we don't have like uh, a, a textbook to go to and be like oh yeah there it is um so i i'm hopeful that we don't get a lot but we simply could just because it's that variable that's hanging out there so that's why i'm telling people prepare and prep as if your power is going to go out we've got a few things in our favor we don't need heat right now we don't need air conditioning right now it's comfortable the house isn't going to get cold it's not going to get hot you're going to be fine you could deal without both of those for days and days and days um, basically you only need to keep your refrigerator you know food in it and in the freezer cold or frozen that's it and that's doable um, i suppose if we end up with an exorbitant amount and we have lengthy you know we're, we're in days and days of outages then we've got some issues for sure but um as far this isn't like the winter time when you know those blizzards and nor'easters get us and we've got a fear for staying warm you know and not you know freezing our tails off and 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 keeping the house how the pipes from freezing and things like that um the other thing is most of the storm is during the day so even if you lose power provided it's a temporary loss and it gets restored relatively quickly you've got light you know you're not fumbling around and looking for a flashlight or candles or whatever you know so you know using your using your cell phone and the you know the, the the flashlight on it right which reminds me that's another one you know just keep this on the charger throughout the day if you're in the house um, probably the best thing to do <clears throat> so that's that's the the power outage thing i mean the winds will be ramping up it'll get breezy this afternoon you're going to go to bed and it'll be breezy and you know the leaves will be kind of rustling around tomorrow morning when you wake up though it's going to be different and i'm thinking it's going to be kind of kind of dramatic you know especially along the coastline um because of those leaves like these limbs will be swaying around and they're going to be doing that all day long and and we just don't have you know summery days where the wind is whipping limbs around from sun up to sundown and that's what we're going to get tomorrow it, it's exactly what we're going to get and we could gust between 40 and 50 miles per hour maybe 60 which would probably be on the down east coastline um, and that is probably enough to get at least isolated to scattered power outages and it may be enough to have even more than that we just don't know we don't know how to quantify this one so again prep as if we're going to get one um, the coastal flood threat there isn't much of a coastal flood threat the high tide is just after noon it's closer to one o'clock in the afternoon it's astronomically low 
We will have a surge. It's not going to be that significant. It might be like one, perhaps two feet. But the wind is blowing offshore. It's blowing out of the north or even northwest. So that's blowing water away from our coastline. That helps. Um, and the fact that the tide is already low, it's only like a nine and a half foot tide. And our flood stage is like 12 feet. So we can, we can absorb, if you will, a couple of feet of surge. So other than a little minor washover uh, on some adjacent shore roads or in some marshy areas, things like that, that are, that are very prone to coastal flooding, I think those are the only issues that we see. You know, there are countless times where we've had storms lining up with an astronomically high tide. And we have boulders on roads. We have um, stairs going down to beaches washed out. We have retaining walls washed out. We have to bring in front end loaders to get all the seaweed and sand off of the, the shore roads so that we, they can become passable again. That, that is not going to occur. But what will occur, really large waves breaking and crashing on our beaches. And I think that's going to cause a lot of beach erosion. And some of these beaches, you know, may be rearranged a little bit. You know, you, you go out there on Sunday to a spot that, you know, you've vacationed at or you've laid out at in the sun, and it, it may look totally different. It may look totally different. Um, I, I covered a lot of storms on the Cape Cod National Seashore, and those beaches were 100% different from year to year. They, it just it happens with these powerful storms and these big, big waves. So I think that that will be be a factor. Um, what else do we got here? Um, I've had a lot of questions about, you know, pulling your boat, you know, your personal boat. A lot of people are on moorings in slips, that kind of thing. Some marinas required you to do that. Others that haven't. Um, Obviously, it's, it's a chore. It's a pain in the butt. I trailer my boat, so I launch and bring in every time I go out in the ocean. It's not as hard as you think it is. It's doable. It takes, you know, it might take you a couple of hours. But, I mean, I'm just telling people to be, it's better to be safe than sorry. I mean, I don't see the, 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 the surge you know, breaking cleats off and breaking, you know, floats off and things like that or moving tackle. Um, but, you know, getting 40 mile an hour wind all day long, I don't, you know, that, that could present problems. You know, that could, that could, you know, break some dock lines and things like that. So I, I can't promise you that your boat's going to be fine is what I'm saying. And you're, I think it would be, but I can't promise that. So you're taking the chance by leaving it there. I know it's a pain in the butt to pull, but I do it almost every weekend. It's doable. Um, furniture. We got a lot of furniture out there. You know, it's summer still. You know, we're out on the patio. I mean, I've got a couple of Adirondack chairs on my front porch that I need to, you know, lay flat on the ground so they don't go flying off my porch kind of thing because my porch is like a little slippery in there and they'll go sliding off. So things like that that you need to think of, you know, just try to put them in a better spot that they're not going to, you know, be, fly away or, you know, roll over and then, then it's kind of busted or whatever. Last year, um, hmm, it's kind of a sore subject now that I think about it, I probably shouldn't bring it up, but we had a trampoline that went, I hadn't, I didn't have it anchored. I didn't have rocks on, you know, on every little piece of pipe on there on the, uh, on the bottom. So it went flying over and over through the backyard. Well, I fixed it, and my wife tore her ACL on it, ACL on it two weeks ago, three weeks, uh, actually a month ago. She just had surgery two weeks ago. So, yeah, my, my, um, I'm dealing with some stuff in life right now. It's, it's a little hard. I mean, it's way harder for her because it's her right leg. She can't drive, and she tore both meniscus, too. So she can't walk on it for until October 15th. It's, it's hell right now, basically. And, I'm, you know, I've got... There's no, no choice. I got to do everything, every little thing. Like, she can stand there and make her dinner, you know, on, like, one leg, but she can't get her dinner to the dinner table with that because she's got a crutch over there, right? So then I got to get up and go get her plate, and, you know, 
it's there's a lot going on in life, not just this. Um, but we'll power through, and we'll get through this, and um, and we'll emerge on the other side, provided everyone just uses some common sense and uh, and and does the precautions that you know are necessary. And hopefully, it's not going to be that bad of a storm. But we'll be following it all, all day long. I'll be here tomorrow morning with that pretty guy over there, Mr. Aaron Myler, who just had a little vacation. Where'd I, you, Aaron? Where'd you go? Uh, I went down to South Carolina and then yeah. home to Pittsburgh. Oh, cool. Okay, so, so. You, you got to see fam? Yeah, I got to see the baby again. Yeah, you have a, a new little niece, niece right? She's about a month old. Oh my gosh, so. she a little peanut? Yeah, she's tiny, a little baby. Oh. Um, adorable. Yeah, those are the good old days. Ellie. What's her name? Ellie. Ellie? Ellie Lydiger, so. Oh, sweet. Cutie. And she has a brother, right? Yeah, Gabriel. Gabriel, he's two, one? Um, almost three. Almost three? Yeah. Okay. So. How is he uh, doing putting up with, with a, new, uh, a new sibling taking all the attention away from him? Well, it's great for me because now he wants more attention from the rest of us. Oh, okay. So now he's more willing to play in yeah, yeah, yeah. the time. You're so. the cool uncle. Uh, when I'm in town. <laughs> right, right, He likes right. when I'm on a plane. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. He thinks I'm on a plane indefinitely until I get back. To oh, the oh, you just keep flying, circumventing the, the, yes. the globe? Until I'm back, I'm on a plane. I got gotcha. you. So I'm currently on a plane, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, he'll be here too. Uh, you're gonna go to um, to Camp Ellis, I think. Yeah, we're doing some research yeah, right now. Yeah, he's just reading up about Camp Ellis and the history that we all kind of know about, and how that beach has been rearranged and that area has be re been rearranged so many times throughout the course of history. Um, I've got to cut in. We're coming up on 8:25, so I got to get ready for that. But um, we'll uh, continue to provide you info. Um, once again, you can follow either of us on Instagram. Mine's Todd underscore Gutner. What's you? I think it's Aaron Myler. Okay. Well, he doesn't care about that. Uh, well, <laughs> which Facebook, one do you want them to follow the you on? The Facebook one. He wants the Facebook yeah, one. Yeah, go to Facebook. Go to MySpace. <laughs> <laughs> or my face, as Bill Belichick says, whatever he said. Um, and, and the Instagram side is kind of like the fun side of my life. And then the, the Twitter side is, is more of the serious stuff. So you can check out stuff there. Um, and all of our platforms are active right now on the News Center main pages. Our website has all kinds of great info, um, our YouTube channel. Uh, and, uh, and we'll see you guys tomorrow morning. You'll see the rest of the team, too, throughout the storm. Later on.